Oh, this is nice. Matt Walsh. He's a writer for the Daily Wire. Is that it? The da Daily Wire is what? Is that, is that um, it's Ben Shapiro's? Ben Shapiro's. Uh, and this is whoa. where he's at the Young Americans Foundation. Uh, Matt Walsh. I don't think it has anything to do with the David Bowie song. Probably not. He's a writer. Um, he has an interesting theory. These guys are so, you know... Well, they're abnormal, but I really think that there is a lament on the right that they never talk about. And that is the loss of an ability to be homophobic in the way that they were just 10, 10 short years ago. And, and they're sort of like flailing around to find a new, like a surrogate for their homophobia. And it, it turns out to be trans people, which I is not, I wouldn't, you know, it's not hugely shocking. Um, but for the amount of concern that they have about what the existence of trans people, it, that, that's the part that always sort of just, I find just absolutely stunning. These are people who, I don't know, may or may not have had any type of one-to-one uh, -one, um involvement with a trans person but can can anybody point to anything in society that is in any way implicated by the existence of trans people or by the recognition that they uh, you know have rights i mean people complain about the idea like i can't get used to the idea that a book that my kid has says he she or they like really can you cannot get over that can you really not get past that like, um, it, it's it's stunning, but it is a rallying cry on the right for the young rightists. This is the real harm that this transgenderism nonsense has caused. Not only does it foment confusion in the minds of children, but it also cheapens womanhood by turning it into some kind of abstract concept that we theorize Pause it. about. Let me just like, like, like first of all, I have two kids who are not confused. They're, they're like of all the things that they're not confused about, like they don't care. It's just us. They like, this is exactly what they said 10 to 15 years ago about like two mommies, two mommies. How are kids going to deal with this? Two mommies. The kids have no problem dealing with it. I can tell you, the kids have zero problem dealing with it. It is, if anybody has a problem dealing with it, it's some of the parents. And they can't even handle that their kids have no problem with it. But this guy would have been saying two mommies 10 years ago, I promise you. And now it's the, the confusion that is fomented amongst young people. Hey, I got news for you. They're not confused. The only thing that would be confusing is if... Um, Watch your videotape of this guy. Right. That honestly, might be confusing. Well, like, oh, hey, dad, how come you have such a problem with this? I don't get it. That's where the confusion comes from. And then the idea of like it's cheapening the ver the vision of womanhood, what, making it an abstract concept. Womanhood sort of is an abstract yeah, concept. The gender binary is an abstract concept. It's a real abstraction in that it does work in the world, but like it's not a biological. But category. there's also trans men. And there's also like woman. Not all females are women, for instance. Like you have children. Like <laughs> it is an abstract concept. He's just technically literally speaking. complaining about something that. Archie Bunker in All in the Family. Does it even mean anything to anybody? Yes. Sean has made me this. watch All I, in the Family. I know this. Yes. Um, Norman Lear, right? Yeah, Norman Lear. This was a song, the, the, the opening song. Go find the opening song to Archie Bunker. The opening song, or All in the Family. When the opening girls song, were girls and men were men. Yeah. This is a lament that is literally 40 years. Yes. We got to oh, hear yeah. this. Yeah. Oh, Listen, that's play amazing. it. Go find it. All right, but wait, let's play this, uh, play this dude. I'll, I'll, I'll try and find it here. Not only does it foment confusion in the minds of children, but it also cheapens womanhood by turning it into some kind of abstract concept that we theorize about. So you women in the audience, you're not even people. You're just, you're just these abstractions, according to the uh, LGBT folks. <laughs> or... If not that. I wonder if anybody there in that audience understands what that means. Like, what do you mean we're not people? 
I've not been treated just like an abstraction. <laughs> like, what does that even mean? Like, what, what, honestly, like, what does that mean? Like, what, does that mean that, like, people aren't holding, it's in his mind, I'm trying to get into his mind here. Does that mean that people aren't holding open doors for women because uh, some women are trans women? Like, I don't understand even what he's trying, what point he's well, trying to no, make. No, he here. equates, um, he doesn't make the distinction between biological sex and gender, which is, you know, something that manifests in the social world. He thinks that there's only biological sex. So when you say gender is a construct, it's a performance, it's something that occurs in the social world apart from biology, he thinks that you're saying that, oh, you know, biological women aren't even real. Well, but my point is, is that like, I get that. Like, he can't uh, accept that uh, gender is a construct and that, uh, that, that in some way by accepting that gender is a construct, we're denying the, the, the material existence of women but i want to know how that plays out in society like what is like right. what is different for women today because we accept trans women like what on their daily basis like what is it that they're not that I, they're I, not I, I don't understand and i'm sure i'm reaching here but i do think a lot of these people like jordan peterson and this guy confuse uh, this is actually a place where I think they really are confusing some of the effects of having such an ultra market saturated society where we really are just sort of market demographics. They confuse it with categories of social progress. So, uh, you know, I think that that's sort of what's going on, but I, mean, he's making, I have no idea what he's talking. He's about. making an argument lie. sort of similar. It's like a weird confluence of like right wing conservatives and uh, I'll, I'll call them feminists of another era who are a little confused about um, what transgender rights mean for women. Um, and they're, I, I mean, okay, they say that TERF is a slur, but trans exclusionary radical feminists, they call themselves gender critical, uh, whatever, whatever. A lot of them are operating based on uh, trauma. They think anyone with male parts is inherently threatening and therefore they don't want them in their spaces, blah, blah, blah. I know there are there is a small subset of of people who um, in that world who have that issue. I still not clear on what the uh, the material implications are. And that guy would have just as my, many problems with those uh, radical feminists as he would with the transgender women. Oh, for so sure. I'm not clear where he's coming from. But continue. According to the uh, LGBT folks <laughs> or if not that, then womanhood is a costume that you can put on and wear. This is especially ironic given the concern for cultural appropriation that you find these days. If it is appropriation for a white man to dress like a black man, is it not appropriation for a man to dress like a woman? Why doesn't anyone ever talk about female appropriation? That is real appropriation. You've got women, you've got, you, 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 you go to a drag show, you've got men dancing around in women's clothes making a mockery and a parody of womanhood. Oh. It is like a female minstrel show. It is female blackface. Oh. And feminists just sit back and take it. It's like watching the majority of the pot. But here's the thing that's unbelievable. So his argument is that thing that I don't believe exists, liberals are not consistent with it. Well, he without thinks- knowing, let me finish, without knowing that the reason why people have an issue with blackface it's because it was specifically developed to mock African Americans and slaves as African Amer- as as second class citizens and as slaves, as opposed to an expression of like this is who I am, um, and it, it's the 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 logic again is just like this is liberals being hypocritical. And they're so, you know, this is like we should be sticking every undocumented immigrant in the sanctuary cities. Every time you and Hayes and the, are on MSNBC, it is a minstrel show of femininity. It and is. Great well, offense. He also conflates, he he conflates the, drag performance with uh, being transgender, which is another thing these people like course. to do, right? Because drag is a performance. It came out of LGBT culture. It's... um. Often, but not always, people who identify as men dressing up as some exaggerated form of women. And it's a whole lot of fun being transgender. Again, not the same thing at all. Yeah, my two senses. He has a really sweaty face. 
<laughs> uh, play my uh, uh, phone. <laughs> Guys like us, we had it made. Those were the days. And you knew where you were then. Girls were girls and men were men. Mr. We could use a man like Herbert Hoover again. The guys, yeah, the, there you Archie go. Archie sounds a lot cooler than oh, that man. guy, though. Yeah, well, it was yeah. a parody, and uh, they it were just being, it was a parody of that guy. I mean, it was a piece right. of satire. It was a satirical. I understand. Uh, and it, it's maybe maybe that guy from the Daily Wire is also satirical.